<laughs> Greetings, my friends. Mike Wan here. It's uh, Gregorian date, October 1, Gregorian year 2024. And I guess I want to begin... I want to begin by, uh, you know, maybe you'll recognize that this is a different backdrop for me. I'm in a, I'm in a house I'm not normally in, and I'm in here because of uh, a good friend, a good friend that I met through Susquehanna Alchemy, and she lets me stay in her carriage house when I'm in town, and so I'm grateful for that. And that's kind of how I want to begin this, this video here. This is, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be something. Um, but I want to begin by just expressing my gratitude to all of the people that I have met through, you know, this, this thing which I'm calling Susquehanna Alchemy. And it has enriched, the people who I've met have enriched my life immensely. And the reason why I'm saying that is because of all the stuff that's going on in Asheville, North Carolina. I have good friends there. And in context of what we're going to be talking about today, um, the last River and Star ceremony that was done was done in Asheville. And in this video, we're going to see that there is a seeming link. <laughs> I don't know what that link, what it means, but there is a, a definite link between the work which, which we do and, you know, <laughs> what's going on right now. Um, and yeah, so I want to begin by saying by, you know, whenever you're, you're personally touched by, by people who may be going through a lot of hardship, people you care about, you know, it just, it provides an opportunity to reflect upon those relationships. So I want to start by, by just recognizing that to Heidi, whose home this is, to Jay and Jay and True Thigh, who are down in Asheville. I hope you're well. Um, Aaron, Cole, all my other friends who are in Western North Carolina. Um, anyone else who I can't think of? Shakina up in Floyd. Uh, I'm pretty certain you came out. Um, Floyd did at least came out unscathed, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, at the end of the day, the stuff that really matters, I suppose, to me are relationships and friendships. And, and sometimes they happen from the, uh, you know, the most unexpected places. So that being said, what we're talking about today is, um, this relationship between the River and Star ceremony and, and Asheville. And in fact, if you've been following along for this calendar year, um, it's kind of come, it's come full circle in a way which, uh, you know, I didn't anticipate, I suppose. Um, so let me, I'll back up a little bit. So the River and Stars ceremony was something I talked a lot about, um, leading up to April. And then um, once it began, uh, January through April is when I was really making videos talking about it. And the River and Star Ceremony being a um, arrow circulation mission where uh, we would be doing ceremonies on different parts of the Susquehanna River and then the New River and then the French Broad and then the Rio Grande and then re returning back to the Susquehanna where there would be a practice of natural astrology and water weaving. And the purpose was to prepare the land for the new destiny, whatever that may mean. Like that's what arrow circulation is about. And so <clears throat> I've covered all that many, many, many times. And I was probably, I was talking, I made quite a few videos talking about the, 
the first couple ceremonies, but then I kind of stopped doing so. In fact, the last three ceremonies, which would have been Asheville, Floyd, Virginia, and then Norfolk, Virginia, I don't even know if I, I mentioned that. So unless you came to one of those ceremonies, you probably don't know anything about it. Um, by the time of of Asheville, the process of doing all of these ceremonies had really started to take a toll. And the next ceremony after Asheville, and the Asheville ceremony, which was the last one which was done, was, was probably the first and the last one were the most well attended and the richest experiences from at least my perspective. And what was planned was to then go to New Mexico, to the Rio Grande, and then return all the water, uh, literally return the water into the Susquehanna River after all of the circulation. But by the time the Asheville ceremony was complete, uh, and I felt depleted, um, that and a variety of other variables, that trip did not take place. Um, a trip to Hispaniola did, uh, and that was, both of those trips were meant to happen, but the, the Rio Grande has not happened, nor has the water been returned back to the Susquehanna. Um, my sense is I should probably return it sooner than later. But that being said, the, the overall arc is this, like, if you look at all of the touch points, which have been addressed, particularly in the earlier descriptions and tellings of this story, um, they've all come back full circle. And they've come back full circle in, um, you know, well, we'll see soon enough. So let me, let me begin. Um, okay, so I'll begin this way. I'll, I'll say that there is a link in time as defined by the eclipses. The river and star ceremonies began in the eclipse window of um, at the end of March and early April. And now, you know, at the recording of this video on October 1st, uh, this is the last day inside the eclipse window, which began two weeks ago with a lunar eclipse on the 26th. 7th, maybe? No, I don't think it's 27th. I think it's, um, couldn't be the 27th, 17th, the 17th of September. And then the solar eclipse is going to happen tomorrow. The, the time between the two eclipses, two eclipses always, eclipses always appear, occur in pairs and usually about 14 days apart, the difference between a new moon and a full moon. And what was started at the last eclipse cycle, and eclipse cycles occur more or less every six lunations or every six months, there'll be another two eclipses. What began at the last eclipse cycle, um, and my entire life has changed. The way I've lived my life uh, has changed immensely. And, and some of the events that have happened in my life have changed immensely in this period of time. Um, we're concluding it we're, we're, we're seeing a conclusion or we're, maybe not a conclusion, maybe just like the end of the first act uh, is happening right now. So that being said, let's, let's go in and jump into the slides. So this is the, the overarching arc of what we're going to cover. And I'm going to go through in a little bit more detail um, after I go over this. So March 25th, and this is all calendar year 2024, March 25th, there was the lunar eclipse, and then the Key Bridge collapsed uh, in Baltimore Harbor, which is part of the Chesapeake Bay, which is technically part of the Susquehanna River. Um, April 8th is the solar eclipse, and that was marked by a lot of... Um, end of days, uh, apocalypse, biblical fear. Um, and it also correspond with the beginning of the River and Star Ceremony Tour, which started at Sunbury, Pennsylvania, on the Susquehanna River. Then we're going to go to July 13th and 14th. The River and Stars Ceremony Tour goes to Floyd, Virginia. To, um, we stayed in Floyd, Virginia, but 
we went probably about 30 minutes from there to access the New River. And then we went to Asheville, North Carolina, which is probably about three hours of a car ride south. And we did what at this point has been the last um, ceremony, and that was on the French Broad River. And then about 14 days later, the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics takes place on the Seine or the Sequoia River. And that was, that opening ceremony was, was, had a texture of biblical mockery. Then on August 1st through 15th, I took a two week trip to the island of Hispaniola, which is where the Dominican Republic and Haiti reside. September 10th, Donald Trump, in a very, very strong way, um, pushes the concept of Haiti and Haitians and eating dogs in Springfield into the collective consciousness. Seven days later is the next lunar eclipse, the lunar eclipse, uh, the next one after, or the one to follow the March 25th one. Uh, and then once in that window on September 22nd, there was a sewage line break in the Susquehanna River at Sunbury. Uh, I should have another line right here, which says, Christy totals her car. Um, she is physically fine, but the car is totaled. And then September 26, Asheville, North Carolina is hit with a biblical devastation water flood event. Then September 29th, uh, the TV show Simpsons, which takes place in Springfield, as in the the location of the Haitians eating their dogs. Um, it surprises its audience and says that this is the show finale, and then tomorrow will be the solar eclipse. So this is the River and Stars ceremony flyer, which was first created in January, and you can see all the different places which, um, which were selected. And I always knew that was going to start on April 8th because that's when there was a solar eclipse. And I knew about this solar eclipse and its relationship with the one in 2017, uh, the, the, the unite, the big one where the solar eclipse was visible all across um, the United States, east and west, going from west to east, excuse me. And just the significance of the one which was taking place on April 8th. And so for the 2017 one, I was at Sunbury, Pennsylvania on the Susquehanna River at the primary confluence. And I was there because Sunbury is a buried sun or an eclipse. And it made sense to kick off this River and Star ceremony tour with that logic. Um, and that plan was put in place in January. And I remember being very surprised at the build up of hype leading to the April 8th video or the April 8th event of the eclipse. And I made quite a few videos talking about it. So there's, there are plenty of receipts, if you will, of this topic being discussed here. And now in hindsight, you know, looking back, um, I think the you know, it might be fun to look at those videos again and, and considering all that we know. Um, on March 25th, there was a lunar eclipse, the lunar eclipse that was the first part of the eclipse window for the April 8th solar eclipse, which is when the ceremony began. Um, and this is, you know, a river and star ceremony. The, the, the river, the primary waters, which were being woven were those of the Susquehanna. And so it was a big deal on that the morning after the completion of the eclipse. So, uh, the eclipse happened on the 25th and then around 1 a.m. on the 26th is when, um, the key bridge was struck by this boat, this, the Dali and, um, collapsed this bridge in a body of water, which is, um, you know, here's Baltimore. This is the Chesapeake Bay and the Chesapeake Bay is, is the, 
technically the drowned river valley or the Rhea of the Susquehanna River. So this collapse occurred on the waterway of the Susquehanna and it happened, you know, on the linked eclipse. That was a big deal. That was a big deal to my value systems, like, you know, the way I interpret reality. And I made videos about it. You can go back and watch of comets, eclipses, and bridges, oh my, and um, Bridge of Dreams, the Surrealists are Synchromystics. Like, you know, I covered this topic considerably. And, you know, just as a reminder, um, the lead up to the event, um, the, the solar eclipse. So the solar eclipse had all of this, like, lead up. Um, people were interested in it for a variety of reasons, but there was definitely a, a, a portion of the population which was taking it as, um, you know, God's urgent warning to America, the 2024 eclipse, end of, uh, solar eclipse, end times, biblical prophecy. That was in the lead up energy and it was just heightened by this. Um, usually it had been my experience because I followed this. I find it, you know, I find it intriguing that the majority of, you know, they're more like, um, religious folks than, than sky watchers. And so I don't know if they, they put together, I didn't see anyone else really linking together the, the, the lunar eclipse and the, the collapse of the key bridge with the solar eclipse that was coming, but nonetheless, they were undoubtedly linked. And so that was a, that was a, a foreshadow, I suppose. Um, Um, as you can see here on the, on the flyer, April 8th, solar eclipse, Sunbury, PA. And so this is, this is, uh, right up here, Sunbury, PA, in this part of Pennsylvania. And then this is the detailed map image where the north branch of the Susquehanna meets the west branch of the Susquehanna and where the star is. This is where we did this ceremony and you can see the people here and you know this is kind of how we did it so let's um let's fast forward um actually i think we'll go straight to here so july 26 is the opening ceremony um of the Paris Olympics on the Seine Sequana River. Uh, I guess I'm going a little bit out of order because technically be uh, before the Olympics is when we did the, you know, we did all of these events. We were at Falmouth, Pennsylvania, Berkeley Springs, Occoquan, Chesapeake. Um, then we did the New River. Then we did the French Broad. And that brought us to July 14th. And then on... On July 26th, the, um, the Olympics began. The Olympics are always a big deal. And once upon a time, I probably uh, put more emphasis into looking at it. In fact, I'm pretty certain uh, I did one of those COVID um, uh, videos re-looking at the 2012 opening opening um, ceremony and talking about that as a, you know, some sort of reflective or mirrored or predicted or predictive programming of what would eventually become, you know, COVID. So why am I talking about uh, the Sen? Um, let's, let's first do this. So the, the Susquehanna mirrors the Sen. The reason why the River and Star Ceremony which is primarily a Susquehanna River um, uh, based water weaving ceremony includes the New River and the French Broad, which may not be well known um, to anyone who lives outside of Western North Carolina, West Virginia, um, Southwestern Virginia. Um, those rivers, like the Susquehanna River, are said to be some of the oldest rivers on the planet. There are only five planets that are estimated to have been flowing for 300 million years. Whatever that means, that's what the geologists say. And um, 
three of those are near each other on the eastern United States, and that being um, those three, the Susquehanna and the French Broad and, and the New River. But there's a fourth river that also corresponds or relates to the Susquehanna River, and that's the Seine or the Sequana. Um, I've talked about that many times. And so just as a reminder, this, uh, the River Seine used to be called the Sequana and was named after the goddess associated with it. And there were um, Celtic peoples that lived there. And so this would be modern day France. And they were called the Sequani, and what we now think of as Paris was um, really significant as well. Um, but let's begin with this. The Seine River goes through Paris and then eventually empties out into the English Channel, and it empties out at a port city called Le Havre. There's Le Havre. And then the Susquehanna does the same thing, or at least mirrors it. And it's the Susquehanna River then becomes or transitions to the Chesapeake Bay right here at a town called Haverty Grace, Maryland. And Haverty Grace is named after the port city, La Havre, France. And so Susquehanna, um, Haverty Grace, Sequana, La Havre. You know, we've got that. We've got this is the Seine going through Paris. Paris is for Isis. Um, there are Isis statues, you know, that predate, um, that were found in, in Notre Dame, like the island where Notre Dame, Notre Dame Cathedral is, uh, used to be a temple to Isis. Uh, this is just part of the history there. This was, uh, always like an area which was about goddess worship, um, Going through the capital of Pennsylvania, the Susquehanna um, goes through Harrisburg. And so there's a lot more between Harris and Paris similarities. But I'm just trying to give for right now, for anyone who doesn't know this, the, the, the reason why there's a significance between the Susquehanna River and the, the Seine River and why what was going on as at the Olympic ceremony, um, one way or the other ties into the Susquehanna. Um, so we'll go here first. Um, on Friday, 26 July, the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games Paris broke out of the stadium to take over the heart of the city for the first time in history. So what they're saying is for the first time ever in the Olympics, where they always do the opening ceremony in a stadium. They did not do it in a stadium. They did it in a river. What river? The Sequana. They did it the Sequana River. Um, this is the first time they've ever done it. And then when they did that, you know, one of the, the, the most memorable things from that event was, um, there was, uh, um, there was a, a, where are we? Right here. Um, there was a portion of the ceremony that seemingly was mocking the Last Supper by replacing Jesus and the apostles with LGBTQ activists and drag performers. And so we began the story on the Susquehanna. And this, this part isn't directly related to the Susquehanna, but it was linked in through the river and star ceremony at Sunbury and the timing of it between the Susquehanna river and star ceremony and the eclipse. And the eclipse was, um, had a very strong ground in this sort of like biblical end of times prophecy. And then I think it's exactly 108 days later, um, on the date of the, 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 um, opening ceremony and do the math, you know, f so the April 8th to July 26th, I think that's, I think that's 108 days, you know, if, for those of you who saw that video on baseball in Haiti, I went pretty deep into like 108 and why it's important to, um, certain sex that, that the, the beginning, um, at, that eclipse and then at the opening ceremony they they have this biblical theme you know end of days and then there's this biblical mockery that takes place um 
so then after that, I, I go to Hispaniola and I was very aware that the River and Stars ceremony was incomplete. Like what was, I had, I, I still do. I have every intention on completing it, but it kind of felt like it took a pause. And then this event, this trip became, um, the, the main focus of at least my time and travel. And it first, like, I mean, it wasn't planned this way, but it, what was discovered and what, um, if you've watched the three part Hispaniola and the Susquehanna mystery, you'll see that the, there's an immensely strong connection between these two. Like the, the Susquehanna mystery actually falls within a larger cycle, which started in 1492 in Hispaniola and concluded 528 years later, um, in 2020 at the onset of COVID or, um, the great reset when it starts again. Um, so this becomes part of it and this, from my perspective is this, this experience is now woven with the river and stars and all that comes along with it. Um, so watch those videos. I suppose if you're curious and you want more of the detail or rewatch those videos with the idea that that wasn't just like some sort of separate event, but that's part of all that's going on. Uh, I indicated at the end of the third video that I'm going to create another one, um, like more of a private, more personal video, because these three parts are mostly about like general information, but I discovered it through my own very personal experience going there. And it was a real trying, uh, experience and really significant to me in my life. And its effects are still being, are still playing out. Um, that's seemingly part of this, this period from the March eclipsed cycle to the eclipse cycle we're in right now, where it is, at least in the United States, um, being most evident in the places that were, that were hit hardest by whatever that hurricane was, you know, what if, you know, whether it was a hurricane or not, I don't know. Um, but we added Haiti into it. And then shortly after that, on September 10th, uh, Donald Trump brings Haiti directly into the collective consciousness as he says that the Haitians are eating dogs in Springfield, Ohio. Um, synchromistically kind of interesting, like dogs and dog star and Sirius. And this is right around the time of Sirius rising. And then just the, the word Springfield, the, the person who's responsible for the video, which we're, we're, you know, you're watching right now that I'm recording. Uh, I didn't know I was going to make this video what, where I'm this connection, which I'm describing right now. I had not put together until I had this conversation with, um, with my friend, Sarah, Sarah, um, another one of these human beings who I got to meet through Susquehanna alchemy. And so it was Sarah who first brought to my attention about Springfield. And then she brought to my attention, you know, about the depth of the devastation of what's going on in Western, in Western North Carolina. And, you know, just want to, express my gratitude to you, Sarah, um, if you're watching. So anyway, so now this, this Haitian story, which, you know, is just really, really brought into, um, brought into, uh, um, at least my awareness through this trip to Hispaniola, I talked a lot about Haiti in it. And then now we're seeing it mirrored in the collective consciousness by, one of the the mouthpieces which has the capability of influencing um large swaths of the population one way or the other and also keep in mind that you know what i talked a lot about in the video you, every single one of these videos i have this character right there that's baron samundi and you know this is the guardian of haiti of hades um and this theme of underworld certainly seems to be in play. 
then after the that Donald Trump injection of Haiti into the public consciousness, the September 17th lunar eclipse occurs. And, um, yeah, that's the 17th. And then on the 22nd uh, of September, in the midst of the eclipse window, a sewage line breaks in the Susquehanna River at Sunbury. September 23rd is when this article was posted, sewage line ruptures. Um, on September 22nd, uh, <laughs> A 20-inch sewage line rupture near the East Snyder County Sewage Treatment Facility is spilling sewage into surrounding bodies of water and then flowing into the Susquehanna. According to the agency, the ruptured line moves an average of 2 million gallons of sewage daily. The rupture's effect on the surrounding environment is unclear at this time. <laughs> Real pleasant, right? Um, so remember this. This is the... East Snyder County Sewage Treatment Facility. And let's go look at this map right here. Let me get this out of the way. There's the Eastern Snyder County Regional Authority. This is where that facility is. This is the Susquehanna River. This is why it's flowing right into it. And this is Sunbury. This right here is where the um, April 8th event took place, right there. This, this triangle, is this right here. And so we see that in the eclipse window, all of a sudden what started here is now, um, you know, it's, it's literally being, <laughs> they're, they're throwing shit, literally shit and piss all over it, right? Um, the day after that is when, um, is when Christy crashed her car. Oh, this is what, uh, before I move on to the, to the car crash, is now let's put this into context. So if you recall, if you were aware that in, um, in the, the weeks leading up to the Parisian Olympics, there was a lot of local protest. And what the protesters were threatening to do was to poop in the Seine River. This is a form of protest against the poor quality of the river's quality. That's a strange thing. Um, I suppose, to demonstrate the poor quality of the river's water. And, you know, this was the online hashtag movement. I poop in the Seine. Uh, so now when we see the ruptured, the ruptured sewer line right at Sunbury, it's, um, I don't know. You know, we see this, we see there's like a resonance. There's a friggin' like undeniable resonance there, right? Um, all right. So after that, uh, the day after that, Christy wrecks her car. She wrecks her car, uh, uh, basically due to slippery roads. Um, so there's like this energy, if you will, it's like, it's not pleasant, you know, uh, Raw sewage pouring into the river is not pleasant. Totaling your car is not pleasant. And, you know, uh, that's a huge understatement when we talk about what's going on in Asheville. Uh, here's how Hurricane Helene brought biblical devastation to Western North Carolina. So now we got Bibl biblical again. What began in the last eclipse or the April 8th eclipse as end of times biblical prophecy and then becomes um, becomes like biblical mockery. Then shows itself in biblical biblical devastation, and they're all somehow like connected back to the Susquehanna River, right? Um, whether it's the Sen Sequana or the fact that Asheville is where the where the the River and Stars ceremony, um, you know, it took place. We see that the French broad um, from the storm, the French broad in Asheville rose one and a half feet 
above its previous highest crest. That's a really weird way of saying, like it reached its highest crest ever. <laughs> but, you know, this was an event, a storm, which um, saw a flood which is greater than ever seen before in recorded history in Asheville. That doesn't necessarily mean that there haven't been floods that are greater than this, but it's just that they haven't been greater than this since these types of records have been kept. Um, also in, in Asheville was the Sawananoa River, which, you know, ironically has my name, my last name in the, in the midst of it. And that also reached, um, it surpassed its highest crest level by several feet. So this was like a, uh, this is the biggest, this is the biggest water storm in the history of these rivers since they've been keeping history of these rivers. This is, you know, this is bigger than just like a, a bad storm. I saw this picture online. It's the flooding at Asheville Cotton Mill in the River Arts District. And you can see how high the water is. You see a building here. This building is underwater. There's probably a road here. The reason why that's interesting is if, you know, you go back to this, this was the, this was the flyer which we circulated um, for the for the Asheville event, Susquehanna Alchemy's 2020 River and Stars Tour, Asheville, North Carolina, Cosmic Geomancing with the French Broad River. Um, and it the event was at the French Broad Riverside Park um, on July 14th. And here's the French Broad Riverside Park is right here. This is where we held it. And this is where this Asheville Cotton Mill is. You know, it's probably a mile or so away, maybe two miles in distance, different sides of the river. But still, this is, you know, we were, this is where we were. You know, we, we, we said, let's prepare the land for a new destiny. Wow. Uh so let's go and look at, at the new river. Uh, before that, um, before we went to Asheville on the 12th of July is when we were in Floyd, Virginia. And then from Floyd, Virginia, we went down and to the new river where, um, where we did the, the, the river and stars ceremony. And we could see right here that the new river um, has historic flooding, not all time, not as, not as, um, not as devastating as what happened in North, in Western North Carolina. It's not a competition, but just to put into appropriate scale the, the, the intensity of the devastation. Um, this what the new river reached, uh, its crest, the highest crest it has reached since 1977. Um, interestingly enough, if you can recall, if any of you saw those videos I made about Baltimore and the eclipse that was going to occur on the, on the 8th of April, I specifically, I put a lot of emphasis on the fact that there's a comet that's visible and that comet, or no, the eclipse itself was conjunct Chiron and Chiron plays a lot, played a lot into, um, into the narrative of that eclipse and you know definitely go back and watch those videos now in hindsight of everything which we're seeing from this video but anyway chiron was discovered in 1977 like part of the chiron at least to me the way i see it is the part of the chiron legacy is the fact that it was discovered in 1977 and all that was occurring in the year 1977 primarily um, that was the year of the personal computer. That was the year of Star Wars. Um, <coughs> and apparently it was the year of a pretty big flood on the New River. Um, also interesting, though, is Floyd itself. So let's, Floyd isn't right on the Susquehanna, or, or right on the New River. If I recall, it's about a 45-minute car ride 
<coughs> from where we stayed in Floyd to where we accessed the river. Maybe a little bit closer than that, but it's not immediately there. And these these uh, articles are talking about Galix, Virginia. Floyd's a little bit further. And I found this article which says, Floyd County dodges much of the um, Helene's fury. And what's kind of interesting about that is uh, if you're not familiar with Floyd as a little town, uh, Floyd is a... Um, Floyd has a... Um, Floyd has a sizable, like, hippie population there, which, you know, you might ask yourself, well, how did this become? And it became that uh, in Mother Earth News, in um, advertisements starting in the 1960s, that it was said that Floyd was um, identified by Edgar Casey, who we've covered quite in depth recently in the... Hispaniola videos that Edgar Casey said that Floyd is going to be, you know, one of the places on earth you'd be safe to weather the coming world transformations. And sure enough, Floyd dodges the bullet. So um, let's just pivot a little bit right now on the name of the storm, Hurricane Helene. And so... Helene is a variant of Helen, just as Helena is a variant of Helen. In fact, I would say Helena and Helene are kind of interchangeable. <clears throat> now, the story gets even more interesting. If you had, if you did watch the the videos which I made on the Susquehanna Hispaniola connection. I go really deep mm. into the connection between the Susquehanna River and Helena Blavatsky, and specifically the Theosophical Society, Helena Blavatsky. Um, and I talk about her and the relationship to the Baseball Hall of Fame at the top of the Susquehanna River, and then Edgar mm. Casey, mm. who is found at the bottom of the Susquehanna at the mouth of the Chesapeake, because that's where he lived and his worldwide headquarters was located and the correlation between his prophecies and the teachings of Helena Blavatsky. Um, you know, you could go and, and read any type of, of narrative to that, whether that's like Helena Blavatsky uh, striking out revenge or, you know, just acknowledging everything we're saying, or maybe that's just one uh, coincidence, one of 10 coincidences that all kind of point to something being connected. But nonetheless, Hurricane Helena, uh, Helena baseball, you know, this was a, watch this video right here. I put this out in September about the baseball ritual, uh, theosophic curses, and specifically the relationship between Susquehanna mystery and Hispaniola. And I talk all about Helena Blavatsky. Um, so then the last piece I really want to bring into it on September 29th, so a handful of days after the devastation hits North Carolina um, on the popular television show The Spring, uh, The Simpsons, and The Simpsons is one of uh, a handful of, of pop cultural outlets that consistently seems to predict world events, the Illuminati card game being another one. Um, the Simpsons takes place in Springfield. And then on the 29th, um, on the 29th, it was uh, a new Simpsons season began, I guess. And it says that this episode was actually the season's finale. Now, I didn't watch it, but and I'm gathering from this article that it was actually just a, a prank. It really wasn't. But there was more play with Springfield in the same way that the Haitians showed up with Donald Trump on the 10th. And then now Springfield and like just kind of there being a joke uh, also shows up in the same sort of um, 
the same sort of uh, uh, avenue into collective conscious manipulation, you know, whether that's Donald Trump as a literal character or Donald Trump as a animated version of whatever the character of Donald Trump is, or just the Simpsons itself, they're all kind of the same modus operandi of television and storytelling, which gets into, you know, large populations mind. And then that brings us up to today, October 1st, and then tomorrow is going to be the second, the day of the eclipse, and the eclipse window comes to an end. Solar eclipse, October 2nd. <clears throat> What's also interesting is the eclipse of April 8th was marked by a comet also being visible at the sky at the same time. And for this solar eclipse, or actually, I guess both of them, uh, I uh, definitely the, the lunar one, that there is another comet which is going to be, um, which is going to be visible, uh, around the same time. It reached its, um, its closest path to the United, or to the Earth on September 27th. So it's still pretty close. And so there's a comet theme, um, which is happening as well. So <clears throat> that's kind of it. Um, I'm just looking at these connections. I'm like, this is interwoven. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to go much deeper than that, but I, you know, I got to call out the, the, the elephant in the room. So with that being said, what are the next steps? Uh, probably in the next month or so, we're going to begin to schedule and arrange the details of returning the water to the Susquehanna. I don't think that we're going to be able to make it out to the Rio Grande uh, for a variety of reasons, mainly just like resources, time and money. I don't think that it, it makes sense. But returning the water to the Susquehanna is, um, you know, that's going to be e like even more significant now than, than <clears throat> what I thought it was going to be, which was always going to be significant. For those of you who are able to make it, um, uh, are interested or potentially able to make it, because we don't have a date yet, but you know, you got to be near Pennsylvania, um, reach out to me and um, I'll put you on the list to share that information with. <clears throat> uh, also, um, at Big Boy Farm, like doing the starboard sessions in person is really starting to become uh, uh, more prevalent, which which delights me because I much prefer to do the starboard sessions in person. So I want to encourage anyone who lives in the Philadelphia, New York area, or who's willing to drive to um, where I am in Pennsylvania, which is just about an hour and some change from Philly and, and New York, like uh, let's do a starboard session in person the significance and the depth of what the starboard truly is about is becoming more and more prevalent to me with each one I do. And, um, you know, the sort of thing which we're doing has real, has a real world implication. Like, uh, when we do a starboard session, like, like something happens in your life, maybe not necessarily to in a devastating way or is, is evident as what we're seeing with this river and stars connection, but you know, that should be so the, the river and stars narrative that I just shared with you is a, a demonstration, I think, if you will, of the type of, the type of, of, you know, magic we're working with here. I say magic with quotation marks around it. Um, cause you know, it's, I don't think it's magic as much as it is like, this is just how the realm works. This is a realm which works on consciousness and intention and inner world, outer world links. And the more focus an individual has, and the more they're linked into, um, significant objects, uh, the more prevalent the feedback loop becomes. And so that is true also with starboard sessions. So I encourage everyone to reach out. Um, still do who's interested to reach out. Uh, I'm still going to do the, um, 
the the recorded ones, the remote starboard sessions. I'm going to raise the prices again just because I don't want to do that many of them. Uh, so just keep that in mind for anyone who can't make it to to do a live one um, or do one in person to come out. Um, you know, the price is going to be rising again. It's 179 right now. Uh, and lastly, I'm planning for a trip to go to Austin in November, at which point, um, I'll be on a podcast, uh, one, which I haven't been on before with a, with a, um, what I think is going to be a very receptive audience, but a large audience. And I'm going to begin sharing these stories. So that's kind of a big deal to me. Uh, and to the growth or the expansion of what it is that we're doing here. Um, and then probably before I'm shooting for December to be the start date, I'm going to begin doing the, what had been called natural astrology courses again. Uh, I'm going to open that up. It's a little bit more expanded and different than what I did before, but, um, that will be coming shortly. So if you're interested, also send me an email. So, uh, when there's the capability or when you can sign up for it, I can go and send you like all that detail. Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. And, um, <laughs> yeah, there's a wild ride. I'll talk to you soon.